Hello, uh, Richard, and thank you very much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. So, just uh, tell us first of all, what brings you down here to DGI? I was here last year, and um, it really gave a sense of who the community is in terms of the government players, industry, um, and my community, and how we can all work together and better look to the future. So what would you say is your main focus, the, the main thing you want to get out of being here? My, uh, my company, Alsys, focuses on data fusion and knowledge solutions. We need to l meet people in the industry who are being innovative about what they do. We meet, need to meet users so that we can better align our offerings to suit their needs. And we meet both of those here. I also noticed that, that, that you're with the British Embassy uh, in Kabul. How does geospatial intelligence fit into that role? Well, it's, it's a fascinating space to be in because the speakers this morning have all referenced the need to better integrate uh, knowledge and understanding systems between government departments. So between the military capabilities and those of others. And it's not something that we are particularly sophisticated yet. And uh, there are many gaps and we need to develop the, the capabilities so that we can better and more effectively plan between departments and collectively understand and measure programs and what we're achieving on the ground. And, and what steps do you think we need to take to get to that point? How long do you think it's going to be until we get to that point? Well, I think if you look backwards, it's taken the military capabilities quite a while to get to where it is at the moment. Um, I think it, there are different cultures between different departments and the way in which they plan and implement programs that requires some sort of medium term changes to happen. I see GeoInt and the capabilities being a catalyst to help government departments work together more effectively to at least visualize the situation, establish a common understanding of the context groups are in and hopefully through that then better work together with their programs going forward. So we're hearing from Frank Coley from the Australian DOD before and he was talking very much about this idea of efficiencies and about the fact that it will streamline the whole uh, military organisation because it ties in data, everyone's sharing much more effectively. Do you think realistically though it will actually create those kinds of cost savings that can be reinvested elsewhere? Or is it something that's going to eat up more and more money as there's more and more data to be analysed? No, I, I think the, the cost savings are significant across all departments if it is that this data integration can be achieved. Um, I gave a talk yesterday that referenced the, the return on investment that can be made. If it is that other government departments harness data that's held in these different repositories, and if you do that, we avoid duplication, we avoid purchasing these, pro, these um, data sets that Frank referenced that they've had to go through um, and ultimately ensures you've got a common repository and a common understanding. Indeed, so human terrain analysis, it's something that you think is quite a, a pet subject, the, obviously we have an entire day dedicated to it. Tell us more about how you're involved. I think the, um, the Afghanistan context shows that we really don't understand um, the, the situation we face um, is highly complex, it's highly dynamic and fluid. And understanding the communities we're working with, looking to try and influence, looking to try and um, enhance the quality of their life, means we need to understand these communities better. Uh, Chief Joint Operations this morning explained some of the um, efforts to map communities in a much more localised sense through their, their referencing system, which goes some way in starting to understand community identity. But there's a lot more to do. If you ask a rural Helmandi, where are you from, he won't tell you he's from a particular district. He'll tell you he's from a community, a mantica, which is his sense of identity. And we haven't mapped that. We don't know that. And efforts to map that are hugely important. So to at least get that common operating picture and the baseline we all talk about from a human terrain systems 
is, is we're far from there, and therefore there's a lot of work to be done. Do you think it's something that's even possible, though? It sounds like something where communities are going to change all the time and allegiances will shift. How possible do you think, realistic it is that we can actually get to that point that we want to be at? I, I think these things are achievable. Um, if, if I can use an analogy from Northern Ireland, there was, there was a great effort placed in what we call pattern of life. It was to really nail down the detail of when, for instance, bins were emptied, when market day was. And the same is true for Afghanistan. And for our soldiers on the ground, we need to, they need to understand the context they're in and what is normal and therefore what is unnormal, abnormal. So, for instance, when is market day and what type of market is running? And therefore, is what they're experiencing um, typical? That's very much at the tactical level. If we can manage that, then we can answer the question with a positive. But again, it's a long way to get to the level of detail we need to be at. And what would you say the, the biggest challenges are then? I think collecting the information that's in the soldiers' heads when they come back from theatre. They have a mass of information, a mass of experiences. Um, and that's a very difficult thing to get out. But of course, all of it has got a geospatial connection. All of it can be mapped spatially and temporally and integrated with all the rest of the data that we're amassing. And therefore, I know there are efforts on the UK side to do this, but our coalition partners um, really would want to do the same. And therefore, if we can bring all that together, and at least we can build that baseline. I hope that time comes very soon. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Absolute pleasure. Cheers.